Hey, uh, what's going on guys? Um, we're keeping our voices down just a little bit. Uh, we're out here at the Cougar Open. Uh, this is Dr. Michael Cottingham, Dr. C of the uh, University of Houston. Um, he helped put all this together and we met back in uh, 2013 for the first time. That sounds right. Yeah, I think uh, my son, uh, Parker, and, and I, uh, we have the Houston Amputee Society. We played uh, wheelchair uh, rugby. Oh, yes, okay. And uh, I didn't have the proper QBE at the time. And I remember uh, it was fun because, you know, it could roll around and uh, threw the ball, but I went back on the rail and hit uh, one of the poles with my kidney and uh, was peeing blood for a week. But um, no, that was a lot of fun for me and just meeting you through there. And, um, I guess we got to know each other better and connect uh, through tennis that I didn't know that you were as involved that you were in tennis. And um, first of all, I just want to commend you and give you a lot of praise and uh, applause, respect for what you've done for the city of Houston. Not just that, like um, in the United States and things that are impacting the rest of the world, as you know, adaptive sports are very hard to advocate for and help grow. So in the city, uh, just been doing an amazing job, so um, kudos. I, I really appreciate that. I'll say that um, you know, clearly it's a team effort with the students doing a lot of work and the university being really supported. And, um, you know, we're just really excited to, to see the sport grow. And, um, it's kind of fun to be part of that. Right. And you mentioned uh, something that kind of hits home and that um, now I've, it's been an educational experience for me on different sides of the coin, playing and organizing and advocating and other things. but with your students, and I, that's something I really respect, is that you put them in charge of uh, organizing, and you get them to learn how to do things that they can do later in life, and you do that at a college level. And uh, so there's a lot of other organizers that don't understand the importance of that, of uh, you know, getting the students involved at a young age to help them grow and expand, not just tennis, but uh, adaptive awareness and athletics. So uh, I, I really like that you do that. Um, so with the program right now, I know that we're here at the Cougar Open. Um, how is the program uh, as far as growth and where are you guys looking to take it? It's great and I think uh, you know, we've really helped support uh, community-based wheelchair tennis. We have a collegiate program as well. We're looking to expand that. We host the annual tournament. But I think our next goal is to have a, a traditional collegiate model along with supporting the community tennis. We're always going to be, I think, Growing wheelchair for the sense of the Houston, but then also having more additional collegiate opportunities for for AAA students. Right? So um, the two best indicators of people with disabilities are getting back in the workforce are uh, do they have uh, some post high school education, and then are they participating in school? And we want to sort of combine those two things and open up a lot of doors for people. So we're going to we're going to continue to really focus on that. Uh, we use this, you know. It's really important for me to see players get really elite and great to be internationally, but it's also really important for me to see players get out and get active and use this as a means to just get independent, healthy, and like engage in society and get independence. So uh, I think whatever level people want to compete at, we want to see more. Right, hey, I'll give you props there. There's a bug or something. Uh, but um, no, yeah, so you're doing a great uh, job. And I know we've had uh, many lunches where we've kind of sat down and talked about uh, different things. So you know that um, you know I competed and organized and did some things with adaptive standing tennis, and it's a fairly new modality of tennis. We're just going through what you guys did, you know, when Brad Parks and all the original pioneers, you know, started and we're starting to grow. So what are your thoughts as far as adaptive standing tennis? And what are some Pointers, or maybe some some stuff that you could uh, share that would help us to be able to grow another category of uh, tennis for people. So I think I think the great thing about tennis is people can play it how they want and uh, engage with it in the way they want. Right? Some players who are ambulatory want to play standing ambulatory. I think we need to create opportunities for that. Right? If players want to ambulate but have a disability, want to play sitting down, we want to also create those opportunities. And I think you're, you're meeting an important. Aspect. Because for a lot of people, that step of handling is really important. Both psychologically and mental health. And for those individuals, I think it's really key to, to create those opportunities. Um, you know, I think uh, it's all about, 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 it's word of mouth, right? When you look at where we find our participants, like one of, the, one of our goals with our program is every year we basically ask every player to find one new person to bring them out, right? And we grow exponentially that way, right? So um, the 
because we, social media pages do attract some people and flyers attract some people, but what really attracts people are people who they know that look like them and say, oh, you're an MP, I'm an MP, you should play, or you have this sort of disability and you, you emulate differently and I do the same as a player. You know, hop in a chair and you can try this and let's play. The key is that, that relationship building that people have. Everyone in the community knows someone else with a disability and as we ask people to like think about who they know in their circles, it really proliferates out and grows with this person. Right. Yeah, I completely agree with everything that you said. And, you know, social media, a lot of people take to that. And it's kind of interesting you mentioned that. I was doing an interview with a young man. He's 14 years old. Um, he lost his leg when he was nine, but he was an avid tennis player before. Um, his parents, tennis family. So he actually got to hit with uh, Roger Federer and Rafa Nadal. Uh, he had those uh, experiences arranged for him. But he's out in Miami now. He's training uh, to be an empty boxer. So he kind of gave up on tennis because we have an organized path for him through adaptive standing and he just he didn't want to play wheelchair but uh i asked him um, you know hey i put him on the spot can you name five adaptive standing wheelchair tennis players and he couldn't do it he could you know he could only name myself so we've been trying to think about you know hey how can we get out there and, and uh, you know grow and introduce other players and things like that and so i think we just talked about really hit home on an important uh, subject as far as just getting people involved bringing them out and saying like, hey, just come play, come try it out. Uh, one thing I will say that I noticed, and it was strange for me because getting back into tennis, that's how I started at West Gray again. And I played with wheelchair tennis players and I played standing instead of um, sitting. And no one ever questioned or said anything to me about, uh, you know, uh, or I just, we just played tennis and it was like so much fun. And then I noticed this, we started organizing stand-up tennis a little bit more at the standing so that would get pushed back in, in different areas from people like you know hey where's your wheelchair and things like that and i know competing and competing at a high level when i was teaching at west gray that's tough because it's a different it's a completely different game playing in a chair and playing standing and there's some amazing tennis players that play at the standing worldwide and you have to train really hard for that so uh is that anything that you've ever experienced as far as like um, you know people uh, you know not wanting to accept them? I, I really want to see the groups kind of com combine and get together because I think that you know psychologically keeping people apart um, you know can, can can do things to people and it'd be great just you know to expose them to all different levels of tennis. You're running community members, so make a lot of friends. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, thanks for putting all this stuff together. It's really cool to watch. So.